This man called Super Bowl 57 on Westwood One Radio after, by the way, I mean, six plus hours of of the eight and a half. We gave him grief for tapping out, but he's only talking to a, a nation and a world for the Super Bowl. But I, and that is not easy, especially since he also like ate hot wings during a uh, <laughs> prediction segment. Did you see that. that? What was that? I mean, this was a, I mean, a monumental Super Sunday effort, probably Super. on par with uh, being the last guy to win the MVP of the year and the MVP of the Super Bowl prior to Mahomes. This is the introduction for Kurt Warner back here in the Rich Eisen Show. How are you doing, Kurt? I'm good, my man. How are you? I'm great. I mean, what a what a day for you, Sunday, man. What a day. Uh, you know, it's yeah, it, it is a long day, but it's, you know, the energy of that day and the fans and obviously the awesome you know blessing of being able to call the super bowl and what a great game that was i mean the energy just kind of carries you um you know as, as you know you get that long day and then mm-hmm. as soon as you kind of sit down and take a deep breath is when it really hits you but um but it's just fun it's culmination of everything that we do it's always a great week and then finishing up obviously a long day on sunday but it's a fun day on sunday um for all of us our show was great and then it was uh, it was great to call the game and then the show began with the super bowl i don't know if you're aware but this was deep buried in the uh, nfl network research packet first super bowl since super bowl 32 kurt super bowl 32 uh, where both teams came out and scored a touchdown on their offensive possessions, their first ones. That was the first. They they wow. came out smoking both teams. You know, that's funny because I was I actually looking into that as my bold prediction that they're both going to score in the first drive. Oh. Ben, our researcher, said, ah, it actually happens all the time. So I'm like, oh, no. okay, I'll go find something else. <laughs> so interesting that it hasn't happened since uh, since 32. Oh, are you throwing Ben under the bus for not giving you the bold <laughs> no, prediction I mean, I, idea? I mean, it must it must have happened lots before that because I think I'm sure he just looked it up and go oh it's happened 15 times or whatever. Well, it was. not so since it was like, Super Bowl oh, 32. Really not since two before uh, your first, Kurt. I like it. You know, not. I like the nugget. Uh huh. I, like uh-huh. I mean, what what do you th- what, what do you think of? Uh, um, I guess which, screw it. I'll just start with the the end. What do you think of the holding call, Kurt? At the end. Um, you know, I mean. I'm one of those that I see exactly why they called it. It's, it's always one of those things. I always try to step back and be objective and go, okay, can I see why they called it? Yeah, I fully see why they call it. Although it looks like a very little um, penalty, when you're back there as a quarterback and a guy is running that kind of route where you're going one way, you stop, and then you separate back the other way, um, a little pull like that does two things. The first thing it does is obviously it slows your guy out down coming out um, where I think he would have probably gone there, but it also helps the defender to speed up. And so what's really hard about that is even if it's not very big, it puts that defender in a position that scares you to death to throw that because, you know, your guy's coming towards him, he's going the other direction and that's a pick six waiting to happen. And so although it looks small on a route like that, it's extremely big because of that separation that happens when you're going one direction, the defender's going that direction, you stop quick and you separate. Um, it's easy to create, you know, a, a nice little window there that I think Patrick Mahomes throws the football. So although it looks like a very little thing and there wasn't a lot of movement on the play, that hold, and you saw it. I mean, everybody saw it. He grabbed the jersey and the jersey was pulled. Um, that, you know, nobody wants it to happen in that moment. I, I get it. But – I think it was the right call, and uh, I, I do think he probably completes that pass if, you know, if there's not a hold there. And, you know, and, and who knows? I don't know. Does he get the first down? Does it change everything? I'm not really sure there. Um, but, you know, I, I'm objectively saying I understand 100% why it was called. And, um, you know, anytime there's a pull of the jersey, to me, it's always the easiest call for an official to make as he looks over there and you see jersey, you know, in the hand of the defender and pulling away from the receiver. It's, it's an easy one to call, even though we all would have liked to have not had a penalty there. Right. And then it seemed that Juju was running a route similar to routes being run successfully in the second half of the game. It, it, what, what do you think Andy Reid, Biennemi, and the rest of the staff saw as they sifted through Eagles defensive tape, you know, in the bye week, all bye week long, all week long, that they exploited to success in the second half? Yeah, um, well, follow me here. So they had a play earlier in the game where Mm -hmm. Sky Moore, down in the red zone, where Sky Moore started on one side of the ball, and he motioned to the other side of the ball. And so when he did that, they were in man-to-man coverage. The guy covering him, man, I think it was Slay in that particular case, he went all the way across the other side and stopped. 
And so Slay, as he was coming across, bounced to kind of a free safety position, and they rocked a guy from the other side of the free safety down to cover him on the other side. So he went from one side to the other, he stopped. Then he went back. And then when he went back, they rocked it the same way. So Slay ended up covering him. They actually ran the ball there. I think it might have been, um, you know, a touchdown there with Pacheco. Um, So they came back later in the game and did that same thing twice, where it was short motion as if they were going to cross the field. Mm -hmm. And as they did that, the guy covering him, man, was going to bounce into the free safety spot, and they were going to rock it the other way. And both times the receiver started, and then he stopped and bounced back to the outside. So as the rotation was happening by the defense, they were looking to get back into their positions, assuming the receiver was going to the other side. He stayed on that side. They got out of position, and, you know, he bounces out, and he's wide open because they catch him kind of mid-transition defensively. And so it was a great job, whether they saw it coming into the game or whether they saw it earlier on that play where Sky Moore motioned to both sides, and they saw, oh, they're rocking both ways. They came back and called it. And the beautiful thing is the first one to um, Tony Tony was actually an an RPO. And so there was a run play called. So Patrick wouldn't have had to throw it. He was just looking to see with that motion, did Slay start to rock and get past that position? Sure enough, he did. So he could have handed it off if they did something different. They didn't. He pops it out there for, you know, for for an easy touchdown. And then they come back and and run a similar play later. Wow. That's all I got to say is, wow, Kurt. So... Uh, By the way, you know, that's one of the many reasons why I love you. Great way to describe something on film without (laughs) the benefit of us watching it as you were describing it. So uh, that that said, so when when do you when do you communicate that? When do you as a quarterback receive this information about what somebody either upstairs or on the sideline is seeing on a run play earlier in the game based on the coverage that's being displayed by the defense when does that com- get communicated to Mahomes to say, hey, on an RPO, uh, look for that, and, and your guy will probably be wide open? As, when? Probably as soon as you come over to the sideline after that touchdown that we handed off. Huh. And they come back, you know, because a lot of times you do put similar things like that. So on that one, Sky Moore, this is something that they've done in the past. So yes. what they did was when Sky Moore went back to the other side, again, it was an RPO. And this time, that first time he ran to the flat. So it was covered because – you know, Slade just bounced back and was in man coverage and was sitting outside and it was covered. So, you know, they put that in. And so I'm sure they were watching that ahead of time. Like, how are they going to adjust to this? And uh, I'm sure as soon as Patrick went over there, they said, okay, on this motion, this is how they treated that. We've got these two plays that we've we've got in our playbook. We're going to come back with this next, Patrick. It's going to be an RPO. So if you don't like the look, hand it off, and maybe we can run it in again. Uh, but we're going to look for that rock of the safeties. And so those are the kind of things that, that you watch, um, you know, and as soon as you come over to the sideline, you're talking about that. Hey, they did exactly what we thought they were going to do. Be ready for this play next time we're, we're in the red zone. Um, but, yeah, those are the kind of things that you're looking for down there. And uh, some teams just put in motion, even when they might not throw it to a guy, just to see how they react. So now they know – Okay, we're going to call this play or this play based on how the defense adjusted to that motion. And how many quarterbacks in the league do you think can handle all this information like this and and, and execute it as well as Mahomes, Kurt? Um, I mean, I, I think there's I think there's a few you know because those plays were actually fairly fairly simple. Okay. Um, you know, because all all you're looking for there before the snap with that short motion is does Darius Slay get to be eight nine yards deep? If he's that deep off of Tony, you know you're going to have space to be able to throw that. So that's all you're looking for there. Um, you know, so, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I think, on, you know, in, in that particular situation, I mean, Patrick can do a lot of things, but those weren't really that difficult, um, you know, for any quarterback. It was just great play design, great play call based on how Philly was playing it. And, uh, you know, you tip your hat to Andy Reid uh, to give him a couple high hoppers that were easy touchdowns in that second half. High hoppers. <laughs> How often do high hoppers happen in a Super Bowl, Kurt? Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. And it don't, didn't just happen once. It happened twice Twice on that. In red zone plays, concept. I mean, that's you could say that this was yep. the difference, uh, essentially. Now, yep. I know we're all focused exactly. on defensive holding. But, I mean, th- these, are, these were not field goals settled for. These were, cu- these were touchdowns cashed in, you know, in, in the yep. second half of a exactly. Super Bowl. You know? Yep, exactly. That's what you talk about when you're playing against another team that can score – you get down there and you've got to punch it in, especially when you're down 10. 
you know, and in the second half it was bang, 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 you know, and, and putting these plays in and being efficient down in the tight red zone, which oftentimes can be really, really tough, right. uh, especially throwing the football. They got, you know, they got some easy, easy throws, uncontested throws. Uh, yeah, again, I, huge, huge tip of the cap to Andy Reid and the staff there for – finding that and creating those opportunities. Kurt Warner here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's talk about the quarterbacks, and let's talk about Hurts first. I mean, he could have been MVP of this game. No question about it. And that's part of the reason why we are still focused on that defensive holding penalty because it did prevent Hurts with a legit, from getting a legit chance to tie, if not win, with no time left. Um, so uh, how, how, how good is he? I mean, I, he, he looks spectacular to me, and what a performance he had that night do, do you think this is is a sustainable he's now a uh, superstar in this league Kurt Warner um I, I think all of our hope is that that's the case mm -hmm. um you know huge strides from last year to this year had to me what was an MVP season I, I really thought he was the best quarterback in the league before he got injured um and would have gotten my vote for for MVP uh, had he continued to play that way and, and not been injured late in the season. Um, you know, I, I think the biggest question is going to be, um, can they play this way for the entirety of his career? Or, or can he evolve even more as a pocket passer and playing the game that way? I mean, he was phenomenal this year in every facet. But – they had a really, really good run game, you know, a really good offensive line. And so I'm not taking anything away from Jalen Hurts. I just, when you talk about sustainable, um, to me, at some point he's probably not going to be able to play in, you know, this great of a run, you know, system that he's going to have to throw it more often. Um, and, and then we'll really get to see how complete of a player he is or how high he can elevate himself as a quarterback. But, you know, I'm a guy that always says, let's let these guys grow. It's okay for him to have room to grow and for us to have to see more from him. But he's done everything that you've asked a quarterback to do. Get his team to the playoffs a year ago. You say to yourself, okay, he's got to get better as a pocket passer. This year, as good as a pocket passer as we saw in the league, even though he didn't have to throw for as many yards and touchdowns and all of that stuff from that you know, standpoint, he was really good at, in that capacity when he, when he needed to be. And then I think there's going to be an evolution where he's going to have to carry them a little bit more from inside the pocket, and he's got to show us that he's got the ability to evolve into that guy, um, and that's what takes him into that next stratosphere. But it's been so much fun to watch that a great kid, and, you know, he never seems to, to back down from a challenge of saying, okay, last year I needed to get better in this. I did. Where do I need to get better next year? Uh, so I have no doubts that he can get to uh, to what we're talking about. And then let's talk Mahomes here. Uh, unfortunately, you are no longer the last quarterback to win the league MVP in the Super Bowl <laughs> in the same year. But it took a while, man. I mean, nine straight quarterbacks tried to do what you were the last to do prior to Sunday, and they couldn't. Um, and Brady's not even one of them, and he won three. He won three league MVPs yeah. and and seven Super Bowls during that span. And he was he couldn't even have d pull that feet off based on circumstances. So, where where does Mahomes rank for you now with two Super Bowls and two league MVPs now in the case of twenty seven? Well, I mean, I, rankings. I, I don't know. I know I mean, that. He's one of the best. I mean, he's you know shown us in a short period <laughs> of time how good he is and. When it's all said and done, he'll be one of the best. Um, you know, can we can we make the argument that he's the best when it's all said and done? And, and can he match, you know, Brady in terms of winning? Uh, you know, I think so many people look at him right now and say he's the best quarterback that we've ever seen play the game with all the skills and everything that he can do. He's the best quarterback, and they look at Tom Brady and it's like he's the greatest winner. And so sometimes they can be synonymous. Um, but I think Patrick's, you know, at least right there in terms of how he's played the game. And now it's simply just about, you know, how many more of these does he get? You know, how many more times does he, does he have a chance to play in the Super Bowl? And can he compete from a winning standpoint with Tom Brady? And if that happens, I think everybody will probably end up saying he's the best because of the skill set and the wow plays and, and all the different things that – that he can do that, you know, some of us, including, you know, Tom Brady, you know, were limited. You know, they weren't going to do some of these wild things that Patrick can do, and Patrick can do basically all the other stuff. So um, I, I think that's how it's going to shake out when it's all said and done is 
Patrick's in that category, will be talked about in that category for the rest of time. And now it's simply, can he match the wins? Can he match the Super Bowls to possibly take over that reign as best quarterback we've ever seen in our game? Last one for you, Kurt Warner. Um, Aaron Rodgers apparently going into the dark later today. He's got four (laughs) days to sit there and think about his future. I cannot imagine. I, I mean, good Lord. I couldn't even imagine spending three hours in that circumstance, but he says he's going to spend four days. Um, Green Bay says they'll take him back, obviously. Uh, uh, Damian Lillard, after you left, came on the set uh, on game day morning and voiced exactly what all Raider fans have been saying. Let him come now that Derek Carr's gone. Uh, And then the Jets hire the offensive coordinator for his last few years uh, in Green Bay prior to uh, last year. Um, and you know the style of offense Nathaniel Hackett can run with, with Rodgers. Looking at all the rosters and looking at all the circumstances, which one do you think is the best chance for, for Rodgers to win one more before he does join you in Canton, Kurt? Green Bay. Um, I think if he wants to play again and the Packers want him back, I think he's back in Green Bay. I, I, I just, again, I think there's lots of different facets to it. But I do think there's something uniquely special about playing the entirety of your career with one organization. And even though it you know, seems like it may have been a little more rocky these last few years, there's something special about that. And, um, and then I look at the landscape, and the best opportunities I think out there for him might be the AFC. Um, and knowing the transition that it takes in most situations to turn – you know, go to another organization and turn them around and, and try to get back to the championship, even though we obviously saw two teams do it recently. Um, you know, there, there's there's a lot of challenges in the AFC. You know, there's, there's a lot of good young quarterbacks to go through in the AFC. And so I, I think the best opportunity still, when I look at the NFC and, and where the teams are, um, they're going to – Packers are going to grow. They were so much better – down the stretch of the season that I I still think it's the best opportunity for him to compete for a championship, to win a, you know, to to win a conference and move on. And there's, like I said, there's the the special aspect of, of playing your entire career with one organization instead of going somewhere else for a year or two and, um, and trying to establish yourself there. So when it's all said and done, if he wants to play, I I still think he's going to be in green Bay. And, and so the creature comforts, he stays put, right? He doesn't have to learn new, you know, like a, a new ways route to the facility, um, and he doesn't have to learn new teammates and and transition and anything like that. Um, he he also has the legacy of staying put for a legacy franchise. But you think the the weaponry that he has um, is is on par better? I mean, like Adams, he knows in 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 Vegas, right? And then you got. Yeah. Uh, a team in the Jets that just swept the rookie of the year categories and is getting Brees Hall back, and he also has the creature comfort of the offensive coordinator. You still say Green Bay, despite all that, huh? I mean, yeah, I mean, I still think, you know, there's some other places that have, you know, some better pieces, yes. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best situation to necessarily win Mm -hmm. and compete for a championship. But, yeah, I mean, I think their wide receivers have to grow up. Um, but you saw Watson and Dobbs play better down the stretch. You know, they were built more around running the football, and, and that became their M.O., and they played really good football down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of places he could go and, and have just, you know, flat-out better wide receivers on the outside. Um, you know, but I, I just, again, I, I'm not sure they have all the other pieces to compete, especially when you have to compare it to, you know, the Jets, right? Jets, great situation. Uh, you know, you, you still got to go through uh, a couple good teams, specifically the Buffalo Bills in your division, um, who's, who are really talented and probably more talented than the Jets are even. But I could see them competing. But then, uh, you know, the Raiders, uh, it's going to be a tough division just across the board. And, and they've got shiny weapons on the outside. But, you know, do they have a defense to allow you to compete? Um, the Packers defense, uh, you know, the run game showed that, that they're right there if – you know, and that's a big if. If they can get some, can gain some confidence on the outside with those guys, and you think about the Jets, they got a bunch of young guys on the outside too. So how, how long does it take to transition with those young guys um, to be successful? So I just think there's a lot of pieces when it looks good from afar. 
but there usually is an adjustment period. And during that adjustment period, do you think you can make it happen fast enough where you get a chance to compete in the short term? Kurt, you're the man. Love you. Send my best to Brenda. Um, are you starting to grind tape on the prospects we're going to see in the combine? Is that what you do? You take a few days uh, off? What do you got not, for me? What do you got? Not here? quite yet. I watched okay. the Super Bowl yesterday. I'll break that down a little bit on my YouTube page throughout the week. Can be confidential. Uh, yeah, take it. Take a little time off, and then yeah, start diving into the the young quarterbacks for the uh, for the combine and the draft. All right, you just bought yourself another text asking you to call in. You just did that. <laughs> just, thank All you. right, I look forward to it. Take care. Well, I'll miss you, buddy. Right back. But at you. Uh, we'll see you. We'll see, see you soon, soon enough. Okay, that's uh, Kurt Warner. Love him. Love you. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern, for free. 